everybody. It is Janet Metzger of the Network Marketers Den, and I want to welcome you to the podcast this week. You know, I was thinking about a lot of different things as I've been working with clients and talking to others and doing it for myself about setting my goals. And I always talk about you can set the goal, but you have to take action. You have to take action to be a success. And the good thing is you only need to do three things. So three is a magic number. Our business, network marketing, if you are in sales of any sort, is really actually pretty simple. But people complicate it. Um, You know, they they try to do too many things. And when you try to do too many things, I kind of call it the squirrel syndrome. You're looking all over and you don't get anything done. So I like to really boil it down to just three things, three things daily, weekly, whatever it is, but you need to develop is a daily method of operation, a habit, if you will, something that you are going to do on a consistent basis, not crazy, but consistently. And when you do this, when you do the right things, when you develop those habits, Your business can grow by leaps and bounds without you working like a crazy person. So if it is so easy, why don't people do this? I mean, what I'm telling you is nothing you don't know. Well, here's why people don't do it. People are going after the shiny objects. It's kind of boring. You know, it's practicing fundamentals. It's this isn't sexy. Um, It's fundamental. It's not fancy, but I will tell you this for anybody that is involved in sports at all, you know that fundamentals will win the game. Well, it's the same way in your business. You've got to practice those fundamentals and you've got to practice them consistently. That to me is really the key. And I think that's where so many people fail is that they're not consistent with it. And the reason why they're not consistent is because they're trying to do too many things or too big of things. So if you really whittle it down and and focus on fundamentals, you're going to win. So this methodology works whether you're new in your business, if you've been in it a while, and you're just not getting where you want to be. It works for everybody. Um, If you're not getting there fast enough, Even if you are doing well and you just want to kick it into high gear, this methodology fits. So it's simple. So I look at the business three different ways. Now, this does not matter what company you're with, right? It it, it does not matter what you're selling, what your company is. In the network marketing industry, it's really divided into three categories, three lenses, if you will, is how I always look at the business. So there's three lenses that I look through, prospects, we'll go into detail more, customers, and recruits or team members. Those are the only three categories. Now, there's a lot of different things that might go into them, but the categories are prospects, customers, and team members or recruits. So you look at those three different categories, if you will, and I like to divide it up into, I need to do three daily activities, weekly activities. You pick what that is for each category. Now, it's your choice because that's the beauty of you running this business is how many days a week you're going to do it. So... I like to, if I'm doing my business full-time, think about it as full-time is five days a week, right? Uh, If you're doing it part-time, three days a week. If you're serious and you want to grow your business, it's three days a week. You don't want to be a weekend warrior and only do it then. You've got to be consistent. You know, you, you can relate that to so many different things, whether it's exercise or it's eating healthy, you know, if, if you um, just do it one day and then you don't do anything for two weeks, well, it hasn't done you any good. So a little bit each day 
in each of those categories or three times a week. But again, I do say if it's full time, five days a week, if you're part time, it's three days a week. So dividing them up. Let's talk about prospects. What is a prospect? A prospect is really generating leads. And people tend to not have enough leads. Leads are not connection. Leads are not people you're uh, uh, connecting with on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever social media. Um, They are not followers, getting more followers or more friends. Um, They are somebody that you have connected with already. So you've done all of this pre-work and you've had some sort of an interaction. Maybe they've elected to, you know what? I would love one of your free samples. I would love to join your group. Okay. So, So the interaction has started. And then in order to generate a lead, what you've got to do is you've got to somehow or other start a dialogue with them. Now, this does not mean it has to be um, face-to-face or Zoom or on a phone. This means they have expressed some interest. Maybe they've even commented on one of your posts and you've gone back and forth. So you've had some sort of a dialogue. So... In order to really have a prospect, you have to be able to have a way to contact them to follow up. So, for example, uh, you've got to have an email address. You've got to have permission. This is the biggie, permission to contact them. You know, hey, I would love to touch base with you. Um, uh, I'll send you a message on Messenger. And if they say no, well, of course not. But if they say, yeah, let's connect on Messenger, that is a lead. Somebody that has expressed interest just because you've connected doesn't mean you have a lead. You've got somebody that could potentially become a lead. So that is a daily method of operation. You need to be generating leads daily. Now, we're not going to go into all the different ways of doing it, Uh, But suffice it to say, to generate a lead, you've got to have a way that you can contact them personally, and you've had to have some sort of a dialogue. Um, I like to, with network marketing, I think it works really well that uh, I could send somebody a sample, I could send them uh, some information, uh, but I always want it to be value added. As long as you are providing value, People want to talk to you. People want to hear from you. If you're not providing value and all you're doing is selling, uh, no, they don't want to hear from you. But if you're providing value and educating them, they want to continue to hear from you. So when it comes to the prospects, the key is you do this daily. It is not, I'm doing it once a month. I'm doing an event. I've got a vendor party, whatever the case may be. That's great. And that's kind of icing on the cake. But this is something you need to do consistently, consistently filling the pipeline. Like I said, too often people are weekend warriors, if you will. They prospect like crazy for a day. They make it an entire event instead of a habit. And then they don't do anything for a couple of weeks. It's it is like exercise. You got to do it daily. And it's a process. Know that when you're generating leads, it takes time. You don't magically have these leads fall out of the sky. Um, You've got to be connecting all the time and then nurturing to help develop them into a lead. So if you strive for three new leads a day, you're going to be golden. Trust me, you are going to be golden. So your daily method of operation should be to be striving to put leads into your bucket, into your pipeline. Those are the people that you will be able to talk to. So we've talked about prospects. And remember, when we're talking prospects, it's prospects to become a potential customer, a potential team member, and also a potential referral person. Maybe your product, your business does not solve a problem that they have. Remember, you're in the business of solving problems. Well, if somebody doesn't have the problem, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference, but they might know somebody. So generating three new leads a day, just imagine it. And I'm talking five days a week here, you guys. I'm not talking seven days a week, 365 days a year. I'm talking five days a week. So if you did that, if you generated three new leads a day and you did it five days a week, you get 16 new leads in a month. Well, by the end of the year, you're going to have, I, I had to get my calculator out here, 720 new leads. 720 new leads to work and work is the key. Surely, if you've got 720 leads, somebody's going to buy. Somebody's going to say yes. The key, though, is you've got to fill that pipeline consistently with leads. Consistently. So that's prospects. Now, the next category that you need to focus on in your business is customers. Customers. I've heard network marketers say thousands of times to me. I mean, literally, uh, yeah, I don't want any more new customers. Well, here's the thing. Nothing happens until you're selling a product or your team member selling a product. It is not network marketing legally if you're not selling product. And it's about customers. Customers make the world go round. So each day, if you're working your customer portion of the business, you're going to have growth. It goes without saying that new customers are the key because you could have a group of customers and let's face it, they don't buy every time. You've got to have more people. So the more people you have buying even a little bit, the more your business is going to grow. So you have to fill your pipeline with the customer potential, the new potential customers. And then we are going to talk a little bit about your existing customers. So the more people you have in your customer pipeline, the steadier your business is going to grow. In the real world is customers come and go. They come and go. So if you have a customer that leaves you, you've got to think, okay, thank you for your business, for what you did. I got to replace you. Replace them as fast as you can. Replace them that same week. And if you've got a full pipeline of people to talk to, that's going to happen. Just imagine this. If you could add three new customers a week, if you're doing it full time, if you're doing it part time, if I could add three new customers a month, this is where you're really and truly building your business. So you got to add new people all of the time. You should celebrate. Your team members should celebrate when you gain a new customer. But remember, they are going to come and go. There is that ebb and flow. So that's why if you're constantly replacing them and adding them. And remember, you are in the business of solving problems. So you need to find out if that potential customer has the problem that you're solving. If they don't, they're not a customer. But here's, here's something that I see too often is that people are so excited to get a new customer and they're focused on the new customer that they forget the existing com customer. They forget the people that are already buying. You know, I've always believed, and you know this too, that it's easier to have somebody buy more than to have to replace them with a new person. So, you know, if you've, if you've worked real hard and you have earned that, my goodness, what you need to be able to do is you want to nurture them and keep them. So you have to stay in touch with your current customers. That's a true win for everybody because if you're staying in touch with the right information and you're educating and you're providing value and not just trying to sell them something, uh, that's a win-win. The customer is gaining and you are gaining. So it's not about selling them. It's checking in with them. How's the progress? Do you have any questions on the new product that you purchased? Any questions? Do you have any other problems that, you're, um, that you would like to solve that I can help you with? Remember, value and education, value and education. Um, and then, of course, customers are a great source of referrals, you know, you might ask them, is there anybody that you know 
Because if, if that customer is loyal to you, they're going to want somebody else to be one of your customers as well. And of course, goes without saying, customers are a great source of new team members. So your customers, though, want to hear from you. Too often, it's, oh, they're on the email list, so they're getting all the company emails. They don't want company emails, you guys. I'm not saying never, ever, but they want to hear from you. The e- an email should be sent from you. Create your own. It's not just cut and paste. You want to be able to put your own spin on it. But they want to hear from you, whether that's picking up the phone, if you are um, Zooming with them, if you're providing education in your group, you want to be touching those existing customers, but always talking about new products. And remember, you are there to solve a problem. So you want to set a goal to add customers each and every week. If someone leaves, replace them. Replace them the same week. So here's the math for you. With three new customers a week, that is going to add up to over 150 new customers a year. Okay, now I I can't do your math for you because I don't know your math, but there's some math to be done there. So if you know how much, how often somebody purchases in a year, and then you know how much they spend, right there is a nice sales increase for you. So do the math. So if you're filling this pipeline with the leads, like we talked about before, this can easily happen. As long as you're reaching out and providing value and you're solving a problem, you're going to win. So strive to touch three customers a day, those existing ones, and develop three new customers a week, ideally talking with them not just in a group method. I I think that's really, really key. Um, So that's number two. The third category is team members. When I ask a network marketer, I, I, you know, I could pretty much tell you what they're going to tell me when I say, what's your biggest struggle? Finding new people, finding new people. Okay. Uh, The other problem I hear about is nobody wants to do anything or people quit. That's the nature of the business. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. It's, you know, the real world is people are going to leave the business. You can't stop that, but you really can slow it down. You can slow it down. You can help a team member to stay longer. And that is going to help you to grow your business. People quit. And they quit for lots of reasons, or at least they tell you all kinds of reasons. I'm too busy. The products aren't coming in. Blah, 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 blah. There's too much competition, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, this is what I know. If a team member is making enough money and they're enjoying success, whatever their definition of success is, they're going to stay. They're going to stay. Even if there's challenges, if they're satisfied and they're enjoying the success that they strive for, they're going to work through it. It's amazing how much more you can put up with if things are going well, uh, because the reward's there. Because people do leave, though. You must constantly be presenting your opportunity to others. Constantly. It's not... Uh, once every three to four months, you've got to be constantly doing it. And just remember this, you're not going to talk anybody into the business. If you do, well, there's somebody uh, just getting ready to leave because you're going to have to drag them all along. You never want to drag somebody into the business. Your job is to offer. Their job is to decide. And when you have that full pipeline, When you're developing those leads on a daily business, you're going to have plenty of people to talk to about the opportunity. Plenty of people. Even if the person you talk to is not the person, you can ask for referrals. Who do you know? But you got to ask them. You got to ask them. And if if they don't want to volunteer, they don't want to volunteer. But if you don't ask, you're not going to get, you know, it. It, oftentimes, I will hear a, a distributor say to me, well, 
I don't know why they didn't come to me uh, when they wanted to, to start the business. Well, did you ask them to? You know, people just don't know that they automatically come to you. In fact, a lot of times they think you might be mad at them. <laughs> it's crazy. They think you might be mad at them because, oh, they might be mad. I, I'm going to leave them as a customer or they're their friend. So it is your job to offer. It is their job to decide. But they can give you referrals, but only if you ask. And truly, when people say they're not able to recruit or that oh, this is the other one, I, I, I chuckle when they say nobody wants to do the business. I just ask them, how many people have you talked to, presented? How many presentations have you done? See, just because you talk to somebody, you actually have to do a presentation. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that. And most people want to do this big ta-da of a presentation. You don't need to do that. Uh, but the answer, whenever I ask that, it's never enough. It's never enough. If you want to grow your team, you have to have leads. And if you're serious and you're doing the business full time, you want to strive to present to one person a day, one a day, one a day. I'm boring with that. One a day. If you're part time or for anybody, quite frankly, three presentations a week. If you're serious, you'll do three presentations a week. You do that on a consistent basis. Somebody's going to say yes. Somebody's going to say yes. But if you do one presentation a month, you know, how long is that going to take? So that's the new people. This is, I think, one of the biggest opportunities and people don't do it. You got to work with your existing team members. You know, it's hard enough to get them. So you want to be able to support them and most importantly, develop them. It's not do it for them. It's develop them. And this is high touch. You're in the people business. Nobody is born a network marketer. I wasn't. You aren't. So it takes time to develop them. And you don't have to give them everything all at once. It's not the fire hose method. It's a little bit at a time. But you have to be high touch. Remember, people joined you. They did not join your company. It's hard enough to, to uh, find them, so you want to be able to keep them. So whether it's a phone call, whether it's a Zoom, whether it's a texting, eh, not texting. I'm going to say a phone call or Zoom or in person. If you're serious, you're going to have three live conversations with folks on your team. Now, maybe you don't have that many, but you know what? You could touch them at least once a week. Say you've got three people, you could talk to each one of them. And it's not just about talking with the top producers. Now, that's very important. And I'm sure you're in touch with them all of the time and the go-getters. But I'll tell you where the biggest opportunity is with that brand new person. They don't know what the heck to do. And your role is to encourage them, to guide them, not do it for them. But recognition is really, really important. I don't care what kind of a conversation you have with somebody. It does not matter. There's always something to recognize them for. Um, and if you don't know what to recognize them for, ask them, hey, tell me what went well. What went well this week? Oh, I got a new customer. Holy smokes. There's something to recognize about. New customers are awesome. A new team member is awesome. My uh, team sales have grown. There's always something to recognize. And remember, your team members want to talk to you if you, just like your customers, just like a potential new new recruit, if you're adding value, they're going to want to talk to you. It's not about training. It's about adding value. I think that, no, I, I don't think. I know that development of your team members that want to be developed is the biggest opportunity for you. It's a whole nother animal of what you do because you're dealing with a um, volunteer army. You know, you have to find a way to inspire 
when you can't fire, you're not their boss. You don't tell them what to do. You guide them. That's, I mean, that's a whole nother, that's a week's worth of podcasts, believe me. But I'll tell you this, in general, when you're reaching out to team members, high touch is essential. It's not just texting and in the group and, you know, it's great to do Zoom meetings with people as a group uh, in your Facebook group. However, you still need to have that live conversation. They joined you and joined the company. So, so I can, I'm sure by now you can sense I have a theme. It is the power of three. I have worked with threes as long as I can remember. You know, even when I was in interior design, I would set up a, there, there's a rule in entire design, interior design, do it in groups of three. On, on your uh, end table or on your coffee table, three works. It's doable. Most importantly, it's doable and you can be consistent with it. And it's boringly consistent. You want to be boringly consistent. Because it's simple and it's three touches, three leads, you're going to find that it's doable and it doesn't take a lot of time and you can do it consistently. Remember, this is like bathing and brushing your teeth. You got to do it daily. You got to do it daily. So, so just to recap, there's the three categories you want to focus on prospects, AKA leads for customers or team members. You want to focus on customers, the current customers, and adding new customers consistently. And then the biggie, the team members, bringing in new team members and nurturing and developing your current team members. Now, none of this works if you don't fill that pipeline. If you keep working on the same folks, I hear it all the time. Oh, I've got somebody that's really interested and they keep I, I guess I'd have to say bugging them and hounding them and, you know, they're checking in. Well, did you decide? Are you ready to get going? Okay. You're coming at it from a point of lack, but if you have enough people in your pipeline, you're not going to have to do that. I mean, if you keep working on the same people, the next best person could be passing you by. So it requires a balance here. You've got to work with potential, your leads, the new and the existing. So again, there's those three categories. But when you think in threes, it's really not that overwhelming. Anybody can do three things. I mean, you know, I, not that I, I have ever tried it or could, but I mean, you see people juggle three balls all the time. You get any more than three and they're dropping the balls. Okay. So you can juggle the three. And once you get that daily method of operation and doing it on a consistent basis, you're going to win. But you got to have that daily method. And that is a habit. Habits take 84 days on average. So when you practice this and you, and you practice this power of three and you're going to flub up, I'm going to tell you that right now. But if overall you're practicing the power of three on a daily, weekly basis, not only is your business going to be powerful, but you're going to be powerful. So this is Janet Metzger of the Network Marketers Den. Uh, you can check out other podcasts, go on to the website. I do offer free um, consultations. So you can uh, uh, reach out to me and we'll jump on a call and happy to answer any questions. But remember, you're in the best business that there is and you can be powerful when you use the power of three. Take care, everyone, and here's to your success. Thank you.